Nuclear power, dirty, dangerous, expensive. Next on Enviro Close Up. Welcome to Enviro Close Up. I'm Carl Grossman. The subject, nuclear power, dirty, dangerous, expensive. And I get those words from a brochure put out by an organization called Beyond Nuclear. Here is the brochure, again, dirty, dangerous, expensive. The brochure adds on its cover, the verdict is in on nuclear power. With me is Kevin Camps, who works for Beyond Nuclear. Let's amplify on television the points made in this brochure. Well, dirty, dangerous, and expensive is um, a good way to remember the different problems with nuclear power. So dirty, it's uh, radioactively polluting at every step of the way, from uranium mining to milling to processing to enrichment to use of the uranium fuel in reactors, and then the radioactive waste dumps that come after that. So in a sense, it's dirty forever. Because, for example, at the Yucca Mountain dump site proposal in Nevada, the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency recognizes a million years of regulation are required at Yucca Mountain. So a million years of radiological hazard recognized by the federal government. And that's actually not the whole story because there are uh, radioactive poisons. Just one would be iodine-129, which has a 15.7 million year half-life. Then you've got to multiply by 10 to get the hazardous persistence. That's 157 million years. So EPA is only willing to recognize a million years of hazard. That's the dirtiness of nuclear power. But it starts right at the very beginning with the uranium mines, which oftentimes are located on Native American land in this country, indigenous people's lands in places like Australia or Niger in West Africa. So dangerous, what's dangerous about nuclear power? Well, the risks of accidents or attacks unleashing catastrophic amounts of radioactivity. So the worst accident in the history of commercial nuclear power happened at Chernobyl in the Ukraine in 1986. And uh, 200 tons of radioactive fuel first exploded and then burned for 10 days. Not only the fuel, but the, the core of the facility was made out of uh, graphite. And they couldn't put the fire out. And that radioactivity uh, was blown sky high and then it fell out over Ukraine, Belarus, and Russia. About 50% of the radioactivity fell out in those three countries. The other 50% went around the world. It fell out over Europe. We got fallout here in the United States. So that's a part of the danger, the danger of a severe catastrophic accident. Another part of the danger with nuclear power is that wherever it goes, nuclear weapons can also go. So the International Atomic Energy Agency at the United Nations recognizes that 40 countries in the world, if they chose to, could become nuclear weapons powers in very short order. And how would they do it? They would do it with their nuclear power technology. We've already seen this take place. Uh, India did this in 1974, just as one example. So that's another danger of nuclear power, is uh, the proliferation of nuclear weapons. And sort of a, a hybrid of those dangers, the dangers of accidents and weaponry, would be the risk of a terrorist attack upon a nuclear power plant in this country. Unfortunately, uh, the waste that's generated at nuclear power plants takes that natural uranium, passes it through the reactor core, and makes it a million times more radioactive than it was as fresh fuel. And then that waste is stored in indoor pools of water. Those have filled at most nuclear power plants now. They're packed to the gills and they've gone to this outdoor storage in silos of concrete and steel, the overflow parking for high-level radioactive waste. Unfortunately, these waste storage facilities are vulnerable to attack, especially certain reactor designs have pools that are several stories up in the air and share uh, pool walls with the outside of the facility. And there's a report from the Nuclear Regulatory Commission which shows that if the pool water is drained, it would only take a matter of hours at most before the waste would spontaneously combust and you would have an accident much worse than Chernobyl 
because Chernobyl was 200 tons of nuclear fuel, some of the pools in the country have several fold more quantity of high level radioactive waste in them than that. And even these outdoor silos were never designed to withstand a terrorist attack. So that's another danger. And the expensive part, uh, you could not come up with a more expensive way to boil water because that's what nuclear power does. It boils water, it makes steam, the steam turns a turbine and makes electricity. It's very expensive. The price tag on a new atomic reactor in this country, and this comes from the chairman of the Nuclear Regulatory Commission, he said a good ballpark number is $10 billion. Well, it's going up from there. It's skyrocketing as we speak. And that's just one step of the uranium fuel chain. There's also the mining, the milling. All of those facilities are hugely expensive, so expensive that Wall Street will not touch this industry. It will not risk its money on atomic energy. The only way that this is going to happen is if taxpayers uh, pick up the tab. The Price-Anderson Act, what is it? What does it mean? The Price-Anderson Act was enacted in 1957, which was a big year for commercial nuclear power in this country. The first commercial reactor was fired up at Shipping Port, Pennsylvania in 1957. And the US federal government had to make two big promises to the industry to get the utility companies to go into nuclear. They had to agree to take care of the liability for catastrophic accidents. That was the Price-Anderson Act. And at the same time, they had to promise the utility companies that the federal government would take care of the high-level radioactive waste. All of these promises were made way back in the 50s. What Price-Anderson does is it covers, it caps the liability that the atomic industry and its insurance providers would have to pay in the aftermath of a catastrophic accident. And the current level right now is $10.4 billion. That's what the atomic industry as a whole and its insurance providers would have to pay after an accident anywhere in the country at any one of these nuclear power plants. So any amount of property damages above that would be taxpayers paying for it. And if you look at Chernobyl, in the first 10 years after Chernobyl, $350 billion of damages paid by Ukraine, Belarus, and Russia. That was in the first 10 years. We're almost 25 years on now after Chernobyl, so add hundreds of billions onto that figure. That's what we're looking at in the United States. If there's a major accident, we're talking hundreds of billions of dollars of property damages easily. And most of that would be paid by taxpayers. The brochure, Dirty, Dangerous, and Expensive, speaks of the crack tool report involving catastrophic accidents. What is that about? The CRAC-2 stands for uh, Calculations of Reactor Accident Consequences. That's the CRAC part. It was a study that the Nuclear Regulatory Commission commissioned. Uh, they had a, a nuclear lab at the national level carry out the study, and then they tried to bury the study because the results were so catastrophic. So you name the reactor in the country, they looked at what um, peak early fatalities would look like, peak early injuries, latent cancer fatalities, property damages. And again, depending on which reactor, um, you're talking thousands, sometimes even hundreds of thousands of deaths were predicted downwind of a major accident at a nuclear power plant. And the damages, property damages, in the hundreds of billions of dollars. It just showed uh, how bad it could be. Uh, the Nuclear Regulatory Commission tried to conceal the study from the public. But Congressman Ed Markey, in 1982, uh, forced the agency to release the report. And it's the most recent report on this subject that's been done by the Nuclear Regulatory Commission. We're very wary right now because they're attempting to update CRAC-2 with a new study. And we're very fearful that the Nuclear Regulatory Commission, which is very much captured by the industry that it's supposed to regulate, will uh, come out with a whitewash that really uh, the crack two was flawed. Um, all of the projections of deaths and injuries and property damages were greatly exaggerated. And really, it's uh, nothing to worry about. We should build a new generation of reactors. That's our fear, is that the NRC is, is up to that. Another point in the brochure is you don't need a catastrophic accident for the radioactivity